So in previous video, we discussed about various retrofitting or various new kind of designs for saving energy when the column is uh, not properly placed. <clears throat> so we discussed about the split tower operation, we discussed about thermally coupled distillation column, we discussed about split column loads and we also talked about intermediate condenser. Now in today's video, we are going to discuss about heat pumping. Now what does heat pumping means? Heat pumping is basically, uh, you know, you can use, you can increase the temperature of a fluid by compressing and then exchange the energy associated with that fluid with the other fluid. So, there is a general idea uh, of heat pumping, which we, general principle of heat pumping, which we use in the <laughs> distillation column to save energy. Let us look at this diagram. This is termed as vapor recompression. So, what happens is that we have got the vapors which are coming out, partially it will be sent to the cooling for reflux and it will be splitted and it will be sent to the compressor. So, this compressor will naturally compress the vapor and it will increase the temperature further. So, these vapors will then come to the reboiler. Since it has been already compressed, the temperature has been increased from this particular value and then it exchanges the energy with, with the liquid which is coming from the bottom of the column. It gives away the energy to the liquid which is coming from the bottom of the column, thereby vaporizing that liquid and condensing itself from vapor to liquid. So, this liquid will be returned back to the reflux drum and the reflux drum will be separating that liquid and the vapor partially if it is there so that vapor comes back to the cycle of the vapor recompression and the liquid which is condensed will partially go back to the column as a reflux and remaining will come as a product. Now what happens is that we upgrade the heat content of our red vapor and thereby exchanges the energy with the liquid which is coming from the bottom. So this is the basic idea of how do we use uh, the energy enhancement in order to save the energy for the given column. Where is Where will it be feasible? Like we cannot do it for every system. The first and foremost is temperature difference between top and bottom of the column should not be very high. Naturally, if I need to pressurize the vapor too much in order to increase the energy or temperature, then it does not make any sense practically. See, when can I use the top vapor to use, to be used as a hot utility or heating utility for the bottom liquid. Naturally, the temperature of that vapor has to be more than that of the liquid which is coming from the bottom. And hence, so what I am talking about is that this vapor which is coming from top must have a temperature more than this liquid. That means what? The, the distillate which is, you know, having light component, right, needs to be having pressure, temperature more than the bottom which is of a heavy uh, species. Naturally, the temperature difference between them, if that is more, then I will have to supply more energy through compressor and hence the process will not become economically viable. So, binary system with low relative volatility, yes, you can use uh, vapor recompression. Say for example, if that difference is not very high, it's not very low, but the other source of heat which is available with you is very costly or either the other source of heat is not available with you at all. In such cases, yeah, you can just compress this and can take it to the bottom, but naturally you, you, you will have to pay more your, your requirement of delta T. If it is more, the requirement of the addition of uh, cost will also be more. Temperatures uh, should also not be high. So, this, this means that the absolute temperature values of within the column, the temperature profile within the column should also not be very high because what will happen is if the temperature of the vapor itself is very high, the compressor thermal limitation will come into picture. What I mean by that is that as you increase the, as you increase the, as you increase the temperature, sorry, as you increase the pressure, the temperature will also increase and because of that, the material of construction required for the compressor will also be very costly. And hence, the, the value, absolute value of the temperature should also not be very, uh, very high. And uh, the, it should, the pressure should also not be very low because otherwise the volume will be very large to handle and hence there will be a problem. Heat pumping can also be done with the help of the, uh, you know, uh, 
an external fluid so here what is happening is rather than the vapors coming all the way down to the reboiler what is happening is that this vapor will exchange energy with an external fluid so this external fluid receives the energy from the vapors which are coming from the top that fluids get compressed and thereby the temperature of the fluid gets increased and then the same fluid exchanges energy with the bottom of the liquid then it is being throttled so for, to further reduce the temperature and then it comes back to the condenser so this cycle continues the benefit of this is that you don't need to take your product which is generally distillate right to various pipings and hence the contamination of distillate can be avoided but but principally it is the same heat which is being generated at uh, you know through through the vapors is being used to boil the liquid at the bottom and hence you are not adding up on any energy so principally this and the previous slide both of them were doing the same job and in the same way you can also have reboiler flashing which also does the same thing wherein i i remove the bottom of the top, uh, 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 column it is being throttled in order to reduce the temperature then it is passes passes through the condenser wherein it will uh, it will give away the uh, it will receive the energy and by by receiving that energy the temperature of that liquid will increase and then that particular uh, you know it will get converted into vapor and then it will be further heated by compressing it and the condenser will just give away the energy on top or condensing vapor will give away the energy on top so now in place of the vapors coming from top to bottom it is the liquid which will go from bottom to top and it will uh, you know uh, receive the energy from the vapors in all the three cases the basic principle remains same that we are utilizing the energy within the column and hence all the points associated with its economic feasibility remains the same so uh, this is something which is uh, you know uh, what we discussed till now is we try to have saving of energy by means of either exchanging the heat with the process or making proper sequence or making you know changes in the design of distillation column we talked about various configuration of column we talked about split tower we talked about thermally coupled distillation column we talked about uh, heat pumping the basic motive in all such discussion was to save energy till now we were only considering the energy saving and in between i have given you hint at some places that you'll have to also consider additional uh, heat exchanger or additional piping or maybe the higher temperature required for the utility other than the you know exchange with the process so all those parameters will come into picture and if you want to really analyze that what we need to do is we need to go for the capital cost consideration now for the entire process if you look right there are two concepts distillation uh, capital cost and heat exchanger capital cost and this two capital cost will impact your final decision so uh, today we'll stop here and we'll discuss about the capital cost consideration in our upcoming video thank you